Mr. Maloney, how are you doing in Fort Myers, Florida? First off, I want to apologize for you for making you read all that. I, I don't know. know where Gresh is, but uh, Fleming and I are about to pull in a beautiful Dunedin, driving two and a half hours in the rain because for some reason they're going to try to get this game in. I mean, that's what we were just talking about. We thought it was like, you know, 80 and sunny, but this may not even happen today. No, it is up here for some reason. We got a window. <laughs> okay, we, we got, got a window. window. Got to get it in, Lou. You know, obviously, like, Lou, the biggest story going, which is funny because I feel like it's disappeared in the last – I don't know, maybe 18 hours, is this whole Otani gambling scandal that I feel like Major League Baseball wants to just, you know, act like it never happened or it doesn't exist. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. This guy's like the face of, of, of baseball, right? And, and we got this big scandal with his interpreter. I think a lot of people sit there and say, well, I know it's Otani. I know you're afraid to see what you find in this investigation, but unfortunately don't you have to look into this thing like you know four and a half million dollars I, I don't know i mean i might have known a book or two in my life that's a serious credit line without knowing you got the backing of otani so i i don't know i, I think it's something they absolutely 100 percent need to look into i mean you're a gambling man like what's common sense tell yeah. you with these two knuckleheads because i feel like they're just immature dopey players that were kind of handed everything and then they got caught up in this this whole mess and, and and they you know fumbled their way out of it well i think a lot of it you know like obviously baseball you can't bet on baseball right mlb or anything else betting on soccer basketball football whatever it may be um the issue is that california you can't you can't gamble and i can't really you can't really use a bookie no matter where you are i don't care what state you're in so um whether it was otani doing it himself Issues. Sure, these guys have go way back to their days in Japan too. It's like everybody talks about their relationship and how they're like brothers. And to, to think that he just found out, you know, that they weren't hanging out at a bar rooting, and he's trying to figure out why he's rooting for Grambling State to cover a seven point line. <laughs> like I would think at some point you're like, what, do we? Do you have money on this or something? Like, doesn't that have to come out? Oh, you're Fleming cackling in the background. It was a good yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a good use of grambling. Why don't you put it on speaker so Fleming can jump yeah, in and speak to us in Spanish. Yeah, and hey, by the way, Will, it, it, everyone's totally comfortable with the idea that you are now Lou's fall guy, just in case Lou's yeah. gambling debt gets too high, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, he listen, I, I put money on Oakland for him last night, <laughs> and uh, you know, we're, 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 we're negotiating the debt payment in the car. <laughs> now, Lou, were you Nomar's fall guy way back in the day? <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> yes, unfortunately I was. I was, but we fought through that thing, so we're okay now. Yeah, but just think about it, though. Like, really, if if news were to have come out that Otani were bet, nobody would want it, even though, like, you can't go anywhere with, like, hey, good morning, it's time to log on with FanDuel, and don't forget ESPN Bet has you covered, brought to you by DraftKings. Like, it's so prevalent. Right. You can't go anywhere without... Hell, the first three ads yesterday before March Madness began on TV, Christian, I kid you not, in a row were for BetMGM, for DraftKings, and FanDuel. Three straight ads right before CBS kicked off their coverage. So it's bound to happen. There's too much temptation out there. But just think about how bad the brushback would be for this guy to sign a $700 million deal, $680 million of it deferred yeah. ever, ever so brilliantly, and all of a sudden now... We find out that he's got a gambling proxy and he just gave away more money than most of us will make in a lifetime. Like, this has cover your ass written all over it. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, it does. And obviously, they'll look into it more. But, you know, athletes have too many distractions and too many things as it is that can get them in trouble, right? We've seen this in the past and it's going out, drinking, getting in trouble, whatever it may be. And next thing you know, now all of a sudden, it's, you know, having guns on you out at clubs and now with the way sports has gone with gambling it's just something new we've already seen guys in the nfl suspended for an entire year for you know putting bets in things like this so they just sort of gave them another avenue to get in trouble with <laughs> you know it's it's everywhere and uh i feel like it's kind of inevitable i don't think it's going to go away you have to keep telling these guys professional athletes that they can't gamble or they can't gamble on their sports well, they can't be using bookies, but it's just it's just another vice that some of these guys have right now. So, right. Listen, hopefully, nothing comes of it. Ho hopefully, he's you know he's clean, and it, it was just the interpreter. But it's just kind of hard to believe at this point. We'll see where this thing goes. So, have uh, you and Flem Dog kind of been you know taking the temperature of uh, the you know the attitude of this team lately and trying to 
figure out if they if uh, if they're connected or not, Lou. Yeah, I think they are. I mean, I think it's you know it's 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 been a good camp. It's just it's the same discussion as before. Like if you had if you had two other starters here that you could count on, now you can actually start talking about some depth down in AAA. You can start talking about a guy getting pushed out to the bullpen or two, where it's really loaded because the lineup, the defense will be better. They're going to swing it. The arms that they do have have been throwing the ball really, really well. But it's I said this to you before. It's like basically having five, you know, kind of inexperienced linemen and absolutely nobody behind them, and you where you know that someone's going to go down at some point, and who's the next man up? That's where this team is extremely thin. But as far as talent in the building, they feel like there is talent. It's just. They're just short, and they've been short for a couple of years. Yeah, because that's kind of what I'm seeing now, and I'm, I'm because I'm gonna I'm gonna read uh, to you from a, a quote from Trevor Story, who seems to be, you know, uh, yeah, I guess the, the de facto leader of this team, or maybe yeah. even the spokesperson. I don't know. Maybe you guys have to, uh, you know, tell me about it. And here he goes into. He says it does feel different. It just feels more connected. It just feels right. When it comes to additions or whatever it may be, our job is to play the game and our job is to get the best out of the team we have here. I think we'll do that. I'm excited about that challenge. It's a very tight-knit group and a very close group. It feels more connected than it has in a long time. Now, he's only been here. This is his third year here. And every year he's been here, he's been hurt. So what do you make about make of that quote? Yeah, I think a lot of that really kind of almost – I think he's kind of talking about himself. <laughs> you, you know, I, I do think that he feels more connected. I feel like he feels more at home and more comfortable. You know, year one, he kind of signs late, has a baby, was sick and can't miss some time, showed up, tough start, got hot, got hurt. And then last off season with the elbow kind of really came in here offensively, wasn't ready, missed way too much time, and it showed. So I think you're seeing a completely different Trevor story here in camp one that is more connected, one that is more comfortable. But I do think it's a close-knit group. I do think it's a group that looks around the room and says, we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of young talent, um, you know, that, that's looking to prove themselves or repeat having really good years or young guys ready to kind of come into their own here in this league. It's just, I, I, I feel like, but I feel like veterans kind of know when they walk in opening day and, and they see like Giolito counting on getting innings and then he gets hurt and there's no replacement, you know, and, and again, it's not like my words, it's theirs. When the season ended, it was like, we need two starters. Like everybody, top to bottom, we need two starters. This is back in October, November. And here we are in April, and, and you never added. And the one guy you did add got hurt, and there was no addition because of that. So it's it's tough to get through 162 games with like six starters, you know? And that's basically where they're at depth-wise. The one and only Lou Merloni joins the Gresham Fourier program. Fitzy filling in for Gresh today via the Harbor One hotline from Rainey. Fort Myers, Florida. Actually, what town are you in again, bud? Dean. We're uh, Dunedin. Both Dun pulling Dunedin. a beautiful job. I don't know what it's called. TD Paul Park or something. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. Look at that Fleming. It's like your, he's like your own laugh track. I mean, I was listening well, to you we're, guys we're, call the game last night, and he wasn't laughing at any of your jokes. I know. Well, we're, we're a little bit delayed here. You know, it was like a, it's like it was raining all day. We're waiting to find out if, if, if the team is actually coming to Dunedin. The bus was supposed to leave at 8.30. We weren't notified till 9. I'm like, well, if it leaves at 8.30, can you just let us know if people got in it and left? And if that's the case, we can get on the road. So it's yeah. driving through rain takes a while. So we're going to just go to show and go here a little bit. Yeah, otherwise maybe, you know, Lou and Will could, you know, hit up a top golf or something, at least make a day of it, you know, find something. Now you're starting to talk. That's to what you. I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, an extra uh, – make that crown double big. Uh, be a tip in it for you later on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I speak Merloni. Don't worry, I'm fluent. Um, yeah, so like you, we see that Snell goes to he went to uh, the Giants, right? Two for sixty two. Yep. All right, that was yep. probably about you know thirty percent, forty percent tops of what Boris was hoping to get, and maybe a five six year deal asking for at least thirty million per. So the price came down. You know, the, you, there was definitely some poker that was played there. Jordan Montgomery still sitting out there. Here you are. Haranguing the Red Sox for not getting two starters. They get one. He's got a bum UCL and he's out for the year. So what's stopping management from going out there and seeing, you know, checking uh, just to see what maybe the price would be on this guy at this point now? Like, how how would that not encourage this current roster, the starting rotation, the bullpen, all of it, that management cares about them and is in it to win it if they went out and like, hey, we got you Jordan Montgomery. Let's go. Play ball. 
Well, it would certainly help, and it's been a need ever since November, and it still hasn't happened. And I would say right now you can get them for a less price than maybe you thought back in November, mm-hmm. and it still hasn't happened. And, I, and this is the frustrating thing is because Montgomery's been the fit for the Red Sox uh, all winter long. Everybody knows it. Other coaches, other managers, other players, uh, every, you know, that I see down at camp on other teams are like, when are they going to sign them? Like, it's inevitable, right? And I'm like, I, 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 I don't think they're going to. And – and unfortunately, it's like, you know, the price has come down now where other teams have gotten involved. And I feel like maybe just handing him to the Yankees. You know, I saw that the Yankees have kind of opened up, you know, talks with him again. And, and I, don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't know. I think he's a fit. I think you can get him for a less price than before. Um, I think he's a fit here for four years, five years, and have some stability moving forward. It certainly helped this rotation out depth-wise. There's no question about it. So, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're completely out of this right now or if they're still engaged, but um, it's been a fit. It's been a fit for a while. Yeah, but isn't this like a, every GM's dream right now that every like single Scott Boris client, like the numbers are going significantly down, like every number that he thought he was going to get, like nobody's signing for those big contracts? Yeah, and it's really what they're losing is the years, right? Because you mentioned Snell, he gets, what, $31, 32000000 million, yeah. so – he thought he was going to get that for six or seven, and instead he gets it for one and one, like an opt-out. So, you know, J.D. Martinez, what did he just get, $12 million bucks. Yeah. So they were thinking more of like a four-year 50. So, like, the average annual is kind of close, but they're just not getting the amount of guaranteed years that they wanted. So the question is, Montgomery, is he going to get like a one year and an option, or is he going to get multiple years that he wanted? So most likely a short-term deal. So it's just he's just not getting the years that he anticipated, and there's no question he's taking the loss here this year. Yeah, so um, I don't know if we had talked to you uh, before or after this happened, but Brian Bayo announced as opening day starter. Why Bayo? Yeah. I think to quote Alex Cora, why not? Like yeah. that was his response. And, and it's, he did mention like last year they kind of, you know, they didn't have sales opening day. He's come back from injury. They wanted to kind of ease into it and kind of protect it a little bit. But he's like, that obviously didn't work. So he's just like, why not? You know, he's like, he's my best pitcher. And to be honest with you, I think there's a sense of if you're Cora, you're like, this is who I have. Like, this is who you gave me. You didn't give me a guy above him you know, or two. You know, like, this is what my – look at my rotation and my best pitcher, uh, when it's all smoke is settled, is Brian Bayo. So I am going to pitch him opening day. Am I asking a lot for him? Sure. But my hands are kind of tied. Like, what else do you want me to do? He could have started Pavetta, but if Bayo's the better pitcher – that you believe in, then you start him. I think ideally, you would love to have, you know, had a starter or two, you know, that that you could kind of place in front of Bayo that has some, you know, years of veteran type guy, guy like a Jordan Montgomery, but it's just it's not in the cards. He's got to go with what he has. So, are they uh, closer to a an official lineup, knowing that uh, opening day is next week? You know, I, I'm sure that they are internally, and it just it sort of looks like he's going to. You know, righty on the mound, he's going to stick with Valdez, um, you know, at second base. The question still remains outfield. You know, I think Rafaela is pretty safe here to be at center field, which will put Duran in, in, in left. And I don't know if that means like a, an O'Neal, a Breu sort of platoon in right field. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why Rafaela could play a little second to get like more regular bats for O'Neal and a Bray rather than platooning, you know, moving O'Neal back to left. So I think it's kind of set. Um, they're still like right-handed bat off the bench. And there's still like an extra guy, an eighth and eighth guy out in the bullpen. And to be honest with you, they have four guys that can go into 60 day IL, which would open up some roster spots. So I wouldn't be surprised. There's no guarantees that, you know, those guys are here in camp. So, like, there's other guys in other, other camps that, like, throw the ball real well or swing the bat from the right side that they could actually claim and put in an opening day roster because they have the spot. So, like, with football, because um, I know you guys got to get going, and, and, and I don't know if it, the rain is letting up or not. Um, but, uh, uh, in, in football, right. You were always talking about when camp ended, like, Oh, this guy had a great camp. This guy, Oh, this guy's definitely going to make the team is are there. Are there are a couple guys who had like really good camps that really stood out. Well, I think a lot of eyes have been on Rafaela, you know, but as far as like guys had really good camps, as far as putting them on the map to make the team, I don't think there's really many of those guys because the roster is kind of where it is, but, like, Connor Wong was fantastic. I think a lot of your regulars are starting to really come around now. Costas and Abreu at slow camps, and they're swinging the bat a lot better here. Story's been really good. Devers has been really good. So O'Neal's been really good. So they've had guys that have really good camps, but as far as 
so good that you've made the team. Probably like Rafaela would stand out in that category and some of the arms. I mean, Bernardino's done his job. He's going to make the squad. Um, so, you know, the back-end guys, like Cooper Criswell's throwing the ball real well. Now, they want him down in AAA for starter depth. Do they want him in the rotation and kind of push a guy like Hauk or Whitlock to that bullpen just in case Jansen and Martin aren't ready the first week of the season? Some of those decisions need to be made. All right, Lou. Well, uh, I hope I hope for your sake. Do you want to call this game, or would you like a like a rest day? Would you like a free day off? I mean, listen. I just drove two and a half hours. Yeah. You know. I mean, I might as well freaking call a game. Are right? you guys spending the night there? Or are you guys going to ride back tonight? Oh no, no. We're driving home. Yeah, we're driving back too. Was, I I explained it to my wife that I'm basically in Marshfield, going to drive to North Conway for a one o'clock <laughs> game. I'm going to drive home after. I was just going to say, because when Fourier was asking that question, I looked around for things to do in Dundon, Florida. A friend texted me, uh, there's a hotel called the Fenway that you could actually sleep at uh, tonight if you guys get rain, rained out there. And there's four breweries on the water within walking distance of each other, probably all showing March Madness. So you can think of worse places to have to crash for the night, Lou. Yeah, better shot of being that last one, I would say. <laughs> that would be a good chance there. All right, Lou, <laughs> uh, you and Fleming have a good game, and we'll uh, talk to you next week. All right, boys. Have All a great right. weekend. See you, Lou. Lou Maloney right. and uh, Flem Dog. All right, so. I just want to see Christian. Let's what? go back to the Patriots. I just want to feel good about the Red Sox. If they had just got You are. Starter, they feel good about it. That's the thing. No, Here's he's the thing. trying to. They, no, they feel good about themselves. Internal. It's weird. Because all I'm hearing and all I'm seeing yeah. is just how they're really comfortable talking about how good they feel about themselves. Like They've embraced so, the underdog role. No, I don't even think it's that. I think they. They, they feel like they're not underdogs. That's the take I'm getting based on Dever speaking, Trevor Story speaking, Casa speaking. All these guys are talking, and maybe they're just – I think they're living in denial.